Now, very uh, interesting uh, situations when one product event is dependent on the other event. For example, a product is defective and is of a particular company. Product is not defective from a particular company. So this is a kind of being defective and belonging to a particular company. These, there are two events, but both are dependent. So this is called conditional probability. For example, I purchase a tire from MRF company. How, what is the likelihood that it will fail before the guarantee period? If I purchase a tire from Goodyear, what is the likelihood that it will fail before the guarantee period? So these are all dependent upon the reputation of the company. In such cases, the events, event belonging to a particular company, event of failure of the tire before the completing the guarantee period may be dependent even. But if you toss one coin and then another coin, both events are independent events. So this is the basic difference between conditional probability and unconditional probability, dependent probability and independent probabilities. Let's see the formula and how we can use this for solving the different problems. So have a look here. Data is a is presented to you. This data shows you that conditional probability of event B when given event A. You already know that a pen is made up of Reynolds company. Whether it will work after falling down on the floor or not. That is the probability of getting failure after the drop or not. So that is conditional probability. See another example over here where a person can be male or female whether employed or unemployed. If you take a data of 900 persons and 460 were employed male, 40 were unemployed male. 140 was employed female and 260 were unemployed females. So here you can see what is the probability that you will find an employed male. So probability of employed and being male. If you ask in that particular lot of 900 people and choose one randomly and ask him whether he is employed and male, what is the probability? Then the probability is 460 by 900. Now if I ask what is the probability that if you know, if you identify the person is male, whether he will be employed or not. So the probability of employed, probability of being employed out of the lot, out of the person who is already known as male is 460 by, you have this number total, 500. The probability of being male employed is quite high compared to probability of being female oh, sorry employed female is 140 by 400 but female and employed the probability is very very low which is 140 by so the probability of female and employed is nothing but 140 by 900. That is how we understand the concept of conditional probability. See the dependent and independent events. See here, if two events A and B are independent, then we can represent the dependency of B over A. Dependency of A over B 
will be same as probability of A and same as probability of B because both are independent events. But if they are dependent events, independent events, the probability of A and B will be probability of the multiplication of A and B. But in case of dependent events, this will be the multiplication of probability of A and probability of B dependent over A and vice versa. For example, in case of dependent probability, probability of A and B is nothing but probability of A multiplied by probability of B when A is given or probability of B multiplied by probability of A when given B condition. Now, applying all these rules, when there are two, three possibilities and we have the probability tree. In case of probability tree, if there are, we see, for example, company A, company B, two, company B3, company B4 and so on. There may be n companies who are producing good items and bad items. So bad items are considered as suppose A event and made by B1 is this space. So out of this we can see that the product is so based on this I can draw the probability tree for example product is made by B1, product is made by B2, product is made by B3 so there are possibilities of production, but product was of A quality based on product was of A quality based on B1, product of A quality based on B1, 2, product of A based on B3 and so on. So the multiplication of this will be the probability of B1 and A. And this will be probability of B2 and A. That will be the probability of B3 and A. So what you see here is that how many options for getting A are 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. So the summation of all these options will give you the probability of getting A. This is called as Bayes' theorem or Bayes' rule which we will implement. Now see the example of conditional probability. I will take two examples over here to solve the problem of conditional probabilities. Let's read it. The concept of conditional probability has countless uses in both industrial and biomechanical application. Considering an industrial process in the textile industry here, in which strips of a particular type of clothes are being produced. These strips can be defective in two ways, length and nature of texture. For the case of the latter, the process of identification is very complicated. It is known from historical information. All the probabilities we get basically are based on the historical data. The 10% of the strips, 10% of the strips fail the length test. So probability of failing the length test is 0.10. 5% fail the texture test. So probability of failing the texture test is 0 0.05. Then, and the only 0.8% fail both the tests. So probability of failing length and texture is 0 .00, 0 0.008. If a strip is selected randomly, 
from the process and a quick measurement identified it as a failing the length test. What is the probability that this texture is defective? So they are giving that already it is failed length. If already failed test length, so what is the probability for texture? This is what we have to find out. Applying the formula for conditional probability A and B is nothing but probability of A multiplied by probability of B when given A. If we see this formula and implement it over here, we are going to have Suppose here we are going to have probability of getting NT divided by probability of getting a length failure. That will be 0.00a divided by 0 0.10 will give you 0 0.08. See another example here in which three firms P1, P2, P3 are producing uh, th have up sorry in this see another example a manufacturing firm employs three analytical plans three analytical plans P1, P2 and P3. For the de design and development of a particular product, for example, X product, which costs reasons, all three are used to varying time. In fact, plan one, two, and three are used for 30% of the time, 20% of the time, and 50% of the products respectively. So, what will be the probability of applying the plan one is 0.3. Probability of applying plan two is 0.2 and probability of applying plan 3 is 0.5. The defect rate is different for three procedures. So here there are two dependent event. One is being defective and one is belonging to a particular plan. So these are dependent events. So dependent probabilities for Defective out of each plan are given, which is defined by this formula, the probability of defective product given J plan. So in this case, we have to find which plan was most likely used and thus responsible. If a defective is found, so what is the probability of getting uh, which plan was most likely used and thus responsible for defective. So out of the defective, what is the probability that it belongs to plan A? Out of the defective, what is the probability that the plan was P2? Out of the defective, what is the probability that plan was of P3? When we compare these three probabilities, we would be able to identify which plan was most likely res was responsible for the defective item. But before that, we have to find out the probability of getting defective using Bayes' rule. And what's it is? Summation of probability of defective and Pj or j equal to 1, 2, 3. So that is nothing but this multiplied by this plus this multiplied by this plus this multiplied by this. So it will be 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.01 plus same rule of dependent probability we will apply here. P, A and B is nothing but probability of A multiplied by probability of B when given A. So the same here 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.03 plus 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.02 that comes about 
0.0, so that will be equal to 0 0.019. What about this? This will be 0.019. Probability of B and P1 upon probability of D. This will be probability of D and P2 upon probability of D. This will be probability of D and P3 upon probability of D. When these are known to us, what will be the first one? Probability of P1 out of D is 0.3 3 multiplied by 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.019. Then uh, next is P probability of P2 with respect to D is 0 0.2 multiplied by 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.019. And the third is probability of P3 over D is 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.019. So that is the values 0 0.003 divided by 0 0.019. So it is 3 by 19, this is 6 by 19, and this is 10 by 19. So the which plan is more responsible? Definitely the probability is high for the plan D. So the possibility of getting defective parts from plan 3 if you find a defective part, the probability that it will be through the plan 3 is highest value. So definitely the plan 3 would be responsible for this. So this was all about event, sample space, probability of an event, dependency of one event on the other event. Base zero. So the basic probability concepts I tried to cover in this. You try a few exercises after after that. I would be grateful. Thank you very much.